Hello everyone. Most of the times it's all about showing up in the, in the event, you know, even like today. Uh, I think it's great showing up here as well because I think I was very less prepared to be true, to be honest. But listening to the speakers, you know, over here, it gives me the courage to share my, you know, experience. Because uh, like we said, you know, essence of networking, when you talk about essence of networking, it's uh, the essence of networking that has brought me back to Nepal. Because I was, you know, doing my further education in India, and then I was planning to work there, or maybe have a career over there, and maybe, you know, come back to Nepal after a later period. But, you know, these, uh, due to, you know, certain things like connecting to right people at the right moment has brought me to this stage, and I'm, pretty, I'm very, very happy to be standing here and, you know, sharing my thoughts. So this was something, you know, I presented a talk last year, I think it was in 2017. So this was Story Yellers where I spoke about uh, my experience. And this was the time when I just, uh, you know, got an offer from Oxford for a master's in law and finance program. And then unfortunately I didn't get the scholarship and all, but still I chose to go for a crowdfunding campaign. And then this was one of the initiatives that I took and then tried for my uh, so-called dream at that point in time. Um, not much anymore because I moved on from that. And I think there was a comment I was going through, you know, my old talk as well as I was preparing for today's event and someone said, it seems like I'm doing, I'm looking at a Nepali guy in a TEDx. Yes, you are looking at a Nepali guy at a TEDx today. And I think I've, you know, that gives me a immense pleasure. Now, when I, when I say about, you know, unpreparedness as a profession, you know, lawyer, we lawyers are pretty much unprepared all the times. But, you know, you, do, you should take that with a caveat. Most of the times you are prepared as well. And what happens when you prepare? The opposition counsel ask for a leave, leave of absence, and what we get is this, another date. <laughs> right? So you must have pretty hard about it. So coming from a law background, you know, the networking is one of the foremost skills that every lawyer should have. So let's talk about, you know, when we're talking about networking, let's start with the meaning first, right? Because we all have been talking about networking, essence and everything. I think we should be clear about the meaning first. So first thing, it's a noun, right? <laughs> and it means the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional and social contact. So that's all we are doing since the early morning. I was getting very, you know, like every time when I'm unprepared, I just wish something should go wrong and, you know, it should get canceled or something like that. And last night also I was checking my mobile, you know, if Pawan messages me saying, die, it's canceled. <laughs> but lo and behold, we all are here. And so, you know, sharing our experience and it's amazing. And I'm very, very happy that I chose to come. So there is this saying, you know, I think Jim Rohn told this, you are the average of five people you surround with. So when you talk about networking and, you know, connecting with the right people, there are five people, you know, uh, I want to talk about today. I want to talk about them more than talk about myself, those who have helped me reach here. So one of the foremost, when I told, you know, I think uh, what happened in my life was when I passed my SLC, I couldn't score the required marks for studying science and that too in maths because some college or one specific college that I dreamt about required 55 marks in mathematics and I scored 54. So that changed my life, you know, all, like it went crazy. I was very disappointed. It was like a dream shattered for a 15, 16 year old guy. So I chose to go back to my village. That was a challenge. I, I had very small dreams from then onward. My plan was simple. Pl pass my plus two, go for a graduation, normal graduation, like a business uh, studies or something like that. Get a decent job, get married, have kids, and then, you know, put my, put the pressure of my dreams on those kids so that, you know, <laughs> they could become something that I couldn't become, right? But that wasn't to happen. So what happened was, there was this guy, all of a sudden he appeared in my life, not in my life, he appeared in my college, right? So this guy was doing chartered accountancy in Chennai. 
So at that point in time, I, did, I had no idea what chartered accountancy means. I've heard about the word chartered accountant and heard that his signature, you know, how much is, is it worth? I think pretty much everyone has heard like lakhs of rupees. And I was like, oh, this is something I could become, right? And then that was that guy. I think he, his name is Rakesh Pokhrel. He's a chartered accountant already and a pretty successful man. He had come to our college, uh, you know, out of nothing because it was none of his business. But even I think it was a coincidence or something. He chose to come there and tell us about this chartered accountancy course. And all I was concerned about was one signature making, you know, hundreds of, you know, thousands of rupees. So I think at that point in time, my primary passion or uh, reason for doing chartered accountancy was more about money. And luckily I got through, you know, all the steps in first term. So this was this guy, you know, who connected, who changed the course of my life. Because if, was it not that guy, I would be somewhere, you know, maybe he's uh, taking my kids to school and then asking them to do something that I was supposed to do. That was one guy. Then there is this another guy who I met during my chartered accountancy. He's a distant rel relative. Uh, uh, I had not known him until I met him in Delhi. So this was during my CA days, right? I owe much of my success during my chartered accountancy course and much of the, you know, uh, efforts that I put into this course and cleared in post it into him. He himself was a CA student. And uh, I think it's very unlucky to share that he himself couldn't clear the exams, but he helped me clear the exams. So that's quite an irony, right? So, I, and I feel he is pretty much proud that I made it, even though he couldn't. This is the second guy. And I'm talking about now the third guy, which, whose uh, connection helped me come back to Nepal. Because after chartered accountancy, I chose to go for law. Because I was not happy with what a chartered accountant could do. Because all I realized was this signature, to put that signature on a paper, you had to put a lot of words, right? So my dreams were shattered second time in a row now after plus, you know, after class 10 and after chartered accountancy. So I was exploring the areas, even though, you know, a lot of people say you have a very vague reasons for, you know, doing law, why to do law or, you know, why to practice law even after you are a chartered accountant. Because if you go in the market, if you go into professional market, almost every chartered accountants have this law degree, but they do not practice law. So I'd be one of those very few people who have a chartered accountancy degree, but still is practicing law. So that is something special and this, the reason I'm here, you know, practicing law, uh, this goes to one of the person, one of the mentors. I work closely uh, during my last semester of my, uh, you know, law degree. His name is Anjan Neopane. So he helped me, you know, come back to Nepal, explore the Nepalese market and then help me come back. And then there is another person who helped me start my own firm. So now, uh, you know, within three years of my practice, I have my own firm. I run a corporate uh, law firm by the name Lexpertise. And when we are talking about technology, we at Lexpertise are not trying to be just a conventional law firm. We are looking into avenues where we can use, you know, uh, make use of technology to assist entrepreneurs to realize their dreams. Like Dulla said, he has to he had to lose his company just because he couldn't register it or you know got the trademark registration. So this is the area that you want to work today because the area is pretty much fragmented. The professional service market is fragmented because what do you do when you have to go to a lawyer or a chartered accountant? You go to your relatives, you know, ask for references and everything, which is very infra which is not very transparent. We are trying to bring transparency in that sector, right? So I pretty much agree to the term that you are the average of five people you surround with. So I talk about four people. I'll talk about two of them later. It's actually six people, right? But the more I look into my life, you are the average of all the people who surround you, right? So if I'm here today and I'm, you know, interacting with you people, I'll take a bit of you, you know, information like some uh, in inputs on the technology sector from Alan, sir something about success and entrepreneurship from Hemrat sir and maybe from some other speakers as well. I take some of it, some of the thoughts like there was this gentleman who said, why are we here? And he said, they want to know what makes, you know, the person sitting there want to come here or, you know, what makes uh, the person over there eligible to come here, right? 
so that that's uh, something so also talking about you know connecting with right people this is some this is the question that i go uh, you know wonder about why do we meet certain people at a certain time right why did that ca guy or the ca student guy at that point in time had to come to our college at that point in time what if we did not meet that person at all or what if we met that person a little bit earlier or a little bit later after you have made a decision because he came at a very crucial point in time where i was about to you know think about my higher studies and bam that was when i made a decision about my life right so let's talk about what would have happened if some some people have not met in their lives talk about these two guys right i guess pretty much everyone knows steve jobs and steve was like had them if they hadn't met i think steve jobs would not marry making this quote you know few years later when he says you cannot connect the dots looking forward and i pretty much agree to this term because I don't know what's going to happen few years down the line. I just have a vague idea of what I'm going to do. But as I look back and then realize where I have reached, I can certainly make you know sense of what has happened. So you can always you can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust the dots which will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something you got, destiny, life, karma, whatever. So like one of our previous speakers said, you have a goal, like Dhanas has said, you have to have a dream. and then you have to work for it continuously no matter what and one day you'll certainly reach there what if these people hadn't met it's sergey brain larry page and eric smith so i would not be searching this image in the google right another thing look at these two guys does anyone even realize who they are sorry so it's ratnakar daku and narad muni right so if they hadn't met this would not have happened right ratnakar transforming into maharishi balmiki so what i'm trying to say is meeting and connecting with right people at right point of time is very essential another thing these are the other two guys i'll be talking about this is one of my colleague Sush- susan trester and bipin subedi due to them we started lexpertis and i'm proud that you know even they are uh, charting on their own course of journey today i'm prou- i can proudly say that you know i have a team of around 10 to 12 lawyers some of whom are present over here and i'm very happy that i got to connect with a wonderful team that supports me through every thick and thin and i'm able to you know provide services to my clients and make a difference to at least to some uh, people in a way that no one else is able to do and finally this jacaranda right i'm talking about jacaranda so what is the essence of jacaranda in kathmandu especially in the summers no matter what amount of pollution what amount of dust you go around in the for a stroll in the evening and just look at the sky and the flowers right you get a sense of happiness they give you happiness despite all these problems so what i'm trying to say is like people are coming back to nepal even though there is so much negativity that you could not do anything over here or you have to go abroad people are choosing to come back and rise above all negative commotions and then contribute to the country So what I want to say or what I want to deliver my message for today is that things are possible over here. There are certainly positive things to be hopeful about even though things will take time. It's upon us youth that who can really make the change because each of each of one are awesome. Thank you.